Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to start a new series of videos explaining the mechanics and the philosophy behind Days of Nights 2 uh, Medieval Wolves. We're going to start breaking down, as we did with Soul Point, the mechanics, uh, shooting, hand-to-hand -hand combat, support, characters, command and control, recruiting, how you can create your armies. Today we're going to start with recruiting and some basics on the characters. And because it's much easier if you see a pictorial representation, let's go directly to our graphics. So let's see how the recruiting mechanics work and the army composition. So here we have the major characters of the rules. Uh, there's a king or general, a marshal, an allied lord, a mercenary captain, a captain, a master of the bows, and a religious personality. There are also some other optional characters like uh, Master of Artillery, but we're going to talk about optional characters and um, different traits uh, in a future video. So every character, every commander, can recruit a certain number of retinue units. And what are the retinue units? Retinue units are dismounted knights and mounted knights in red, and the upgrades, mana times one, pike blocks, and Hussite war wagons. These three units in blue are upgrades from pikes, uh, heavy infantry basically, and uh, an upgrade for a Swiss captain that is a specialized unit who side war wagons. I think there are more uh, rating units depending on the type of army and uh, you're using like Italian wars or crusades uh, or Hundred Years War or Scottish Wars of Independence uh, or you have a Swiss army where pike blocks are part of uh, the upgrade. Now, these retinue units cannot be more than 50% of your battle, of your division. And in one division, you must have same retinue units. So, if you choose mana times one, that's an upgrade of mana times. It's a more robust unit of mana times and knights, that's why it's an upgrade. You have to use only mana times one in this division, and this should be no more than 50%. Of your, of, your, of your division. So let's see here the king. The king has the ability to recruit two retinue units. He must have a captain, a marshal, a master of longbow, and a religious personality. He can bring all these. Now, if the king decides to recruit upgrades, that means mana times and foot knights, mana times one, this is, these are the retinue units he must have in his division, up to 50%. Now, the captain can recruit one retinue unit. He's part of the king's division, and he can control any unit in the king's division. But the captain cannot bring upgraded units. So a captain cannot bring mana times one, pike blocks, Hussite war wagons, or any upgrade. So he cannot bring the blue can bring only original retinue units like dismounted knights and mounted knights. So if the king recruits men at arms one, then the captain cannot recruit its retinue. If the king decides to recruit dismounted knights, then the captain can bring a unit of dismounted knights. Or if the king decides to uh, recruit mounted knights as his retinue unit, the captain can bring a unit of mounted knights. Now if we go to a marshal, who a marshal commands a battle, he can command a battle. Uh, a marshal can bring two retinue units, and his captain can bring one retinue unit. Again, the same situation. If the marshal decides to bring upgrades, then the captain cannot bring a retinue unit. If the marshal decides to bring the original retinue units, mounted knights or dismounted knights, then the captain can add a third retinue unit. The retinue units, again, in the marshal's division cannot be more than 50% of the army total, and they must be the same retinue. Now let's go to the Allied Lord, who again has a captain. The Allied Lord can bring one retinue unit and the captain one. So the Allied Lord will probably want to bring dismounted knights or mounted knights so he can have in his division two retinue units so the captain can bring also dismounted knights or mounted knights accordingly. The Allied Lord works as a separate division. He cannot be part of the division of the king and can control six units. So he can command six units, no more than six units. The king and the marshal, I neglected to mention, can move, can control 
the whole battles as long as the units are in base-to-base -base contact as a group. The captains control only one unit and only they have influence in the units that they are part of their commander's battles. So if a captain is attached to a unit of another battle, it doesn't give them the attributes or it cannot control them. It has no meaning. So let's go then to the mercenary captain. The mercenary captain can bring one retaining unit and all the other units should be professional upgrades. That means that you can bring a unit of upgrade minor arms, and then you can have professional minor arms, uh, professional pikemen. Uh, this is an attribute given to like a small upgrade given to units and gives them some extra modifiers and attributes being professional as this uh, mercenary captain is basically a free company that supports. Again, the mercenary captain works separately. His battle is separate. He commands his battle separately from the king's battle. The master of the longbows and religious personalities are um, characters that don't command units, they are attached to, and they give some characteristics, like uh, the master of bows gives a better shooting uh, averages, and the religious personality uh, makes this, the troop that he's attached to, inspired. But we're going to talk about these things uh, in the future. So, now that we understood how things work, I hope you understood, let's go back and see, for example, a division I made. So you can have a division of a king with nine units, and we'll have a marshal and two captains, one captain for the king and one captain for the marshal, and a religious personality attached with the king, and also a master of longbows. As you can see, there's no more than 50% of retinue units in the battle, and all are of the same type. Heavy cavalry then is added, it's not a retinue unit, then normal man at arms, basically it's heavy infantry and longbow units. So this is how a battle works and these units can be commanded and moved if they are attached uh, as a group by the king or the general and by the marshal. The captains can move and command only uh, one unit, the unit they are attached to. Obviously they can move and change uh, to other units. In the same, the mercenary captain cannot have more than four units to command, especially if they are in the group. One will be retinue, as we see here, and the rest will be a professional upgrade. The Allied Lord, who can also be a religious personality, we'll discuss about this in more detail in future videos. As we said, they can command six units. Now, if uh, the Allied Lord decides to bring the original retinue units, dismounted knights or mounted knights, then his captain can bring one more retinue unit, either mounted knights or dismounted knights, depending on what his lord decide, and control it. So the Allied Lord can have in his retinue, in his battle, seven units, but he can control as a group only six. Again, the Allied Lord uh, works separately. It's a separate division from the king. So this is how recruiting works and how you can recruit and compose uh, your divisions and these characters. That you have. So guys, I hope you understood the recruiting process and how you can create your armies. Of course, the number of units depends on the EQs you're going to use. Uh, this is, the, as I said, the medieval French uh, currency and it depends if you're going to use 1,000, 2,000. Of course, you can have more units and more retinues and more commanders. So it depends on how big armies you want to fight the battle with. Now these armies you see now, this English army, the Scottish is similar, is around 500 EQs. This is the only units I have currently, although I'm using bigger bases, 80 by 80, so I could have made them smaller, I could have made them 80 by 40 and have more units, but I like the bigger size. So in the next video we're going to see these characters, how they can influence the movement and how they can influence the battle and how important they are to the command and control of the army. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the first video. Talk to you soon and have a great uh, remaining week. Bye-bye.